This molecule is an enone. We have a carbonyl and it's in conjugation with an alkene in the same molecule. When we treat this with a Grignard reagent and treat it with water in a second step, we'll get addition to the carbonyl of this compound. The Grignard acts as a nucleophile here, the electrons push up onto oxygen, we get an alkoxide which we protonate in the second step with water to make the alcohol. Now if we perform this same reaction but add in a catalytic amount of copper chloride, we get a completely different product. The ethyl group, instead of reacting at the carbonyl carbon, has reacted at the end of the conjugated system. Let's look at the mechanism for this reaction, which is called a conjugate addition. It can also be called a 1,4 addition or a Michael addition in honor of its discoverer. The name 1,4 addition derives from the fact that if we number the conjugated system starting with oxygen, 1, 2, 3, 4, the nucleophile adds at the 4 position but uses the entire conjugated system. This reaction up here can also be called a 1,2 addition because it only has to do with electrons moving between atoms 1 and 2 of the conjugated system. So when we have an enone, and an appropriate nucleophile for 1,4 Michael addition, we can draw our arrow pushing this way. The nucleophile bonds here, this double bond shifts over, and the electrons go up onto oxygen. Now when we work this up with water, or maybe a slightly acidic solution, we can show the carbonyl double bond reforming, and these electrons attacking the proton. If the enolate protonates on oxygen, we get an enol. But that's no problem because this compound will readily tautomerize to the ketone, giving us the same product. So each of these routes is a fine way to draw the mechanism. So what's going on here that's changing the way that this reaction goes such that we get a different product? Well, Grignard's and organolithium reagents prefer in most cases to add 1, 2. But this here generates a cuprate, and cuprates prefer to add 1, 4. We're going to get to why near the end of this video, but we see these two contrasting mechanisms, and we have to have a basis for figuring out when one of these mechanisms is going to occur over the other so that we can predict products. Now, to know whether a given reaction will produce a 1,2 addition product or a 1,4 addition product, we have to consider several factors. Reaction conditions can influence 1,2 versus 1,4 addition. When this reaction, the addition of the cyanide nucleophile to this enone here, is run at cool temperatures, we get the 1,2 addition product. This is called a cyanohydrin. However, when we heat this reaction, we get the 1,4 product. So when we run this reaction at cool temperatures, cyanide prefers to add 1,2. And when we run it at warm temperatures, cyanide can add 1,2 as well. But that reaction is reversible. And under these equilibrating conditions, we start to funnel to this product, and the product of 1,4 addition cannot reverse the reaction. So let's look at that mechanism and see why. So in this process, some of the cyanide is going to add to the carbonyl. That gives this intermediate. Now, cyanide is a pretty stable anion. So at warm temperatures, these electrons can push back down and kick out Cn-. Now, some of the cyanide can add in a 1,4 fashion. Now, this can become protonated by the HCN in solution, and now there'll be no anion in the molecule that can kick out this group. So, under these heated conditions, where the reaction, the 1,2 addition, becomes reversible, we can funnel all of this to our 1,4 addition product. Though we've been looking only at enones of ketones, there's a variety of substrates that can have this style of conjugation. Let's look at them. Now, acid chlorides are the most reactive of the functional derivatives of carboxylic acids, undergoing nucleophilic displacement here quite readily. 
Now, amides are among the least reactive. We have a lone pair on nitrogen that can donate in by resonance, stabilizing the carbonyl. Well, that's going to play a huge role in whether the substrate prefers to undergo 1, 2, or 1, 4 addition. The acid chloride, very reactive at a carbonyl carbon, undergoes 1, 2 addition much more readily. And these less reactive functional derivatives that stabilize the carbonyl by resonance are going to favor 1, 4 addition. Now, even though we saw up here that Grignard reagents typically promote 1, 2 addition, when this amide is treated with n at cold temperature, the 1,4 product is the only product observed and is isolated in very good yield. And we get this product with the butyl group added at the end of the conjugated system. The final factor that influences the outcome of the reaction is the nature of the nucleophile. And some nucleophiles are considered hard and some are considered soft. So let's take a look at some examples and see what's going on and what these terms even mean. Grignards are considered hard nucleophiles and prefer to add 1, 2, unless the substrate structure, as we've seen, prevents that. When the same enone is treated with this sulfur nucleophile at room temperature, we see 1, 4 addition. Okay, let's look at examples of some of these nucleophiles and talk about why a hard nucleophile would prefer 1, 2 addition and a soft nucleophile would prefer 1, 4. Now our enone contains a ketone and ketones have this nice dipole. There's this electronegative atom and it is on one side of the molecule double bonded and so what happens is we get a dipole going in this direction. This makes the oxygen partially negative. And this carbon consequently is partially positive. We can even draw a resonance form that puts formal negative charge on the oxygen and formal positive charge on the carbon. Now for a nucleophile to add here, to add one, two, the dominating factor needs to be electrostatic interactions. Hard nucleophiles will add 1, 2 because these tend to be small nucleophiles with a lot of charge concentrated on a small atom. Let's look at some examples. The smaller, more electronegative halogens will prefer to add 1, 2. Hydroxide and water contain oxygen, a small electronegative element. These are also hard nucleophiles. Alkoxides and alcohols have the same thing going on, negative charge or negative character on oxygen, a small atom. Other examples include ammonia, Grignard reagents, which have lots of ionic character and a lot of charge concentrated on carbon, and organolithium reagents, which also have a lot of ionic character on the carbon atom. Now, soft nucleophiles add 1, 4, and the reason for this is because their addition is not governed by this electrostatic interaction. Instead, orbital interactions are going to dominate. A conjugated system like this will interact with its LUMO, and the nucleophile has the electron, so it has to interact with its highest occupied molecular orbital, the HOMO, and these orbital interactions dominate and 1,4 addition occurs. So what are some examples of soft nucleophiles? Some very important ones are iodine, the biggest of the halogens and the least electronegative. Sulfur is below oxygen on the periodic table. It's less electronegative, it's larger in size because it has additional atomic orbitals, and so these are soft nucleophiles and 1,4 addition will dominate. Another important one is phosphorus-based nucleophiles. Phosphorus is also very large and will tend to add 1,4. Triphenylphosphine is an important soft nucleophile because it can add 1,4 and then be used to make a stabilized Wittig reagent. The resonance in enolates spreads out the charge on them, and these are incredibly important soft nucleophiles that we can use in 1,4 addition to form carbon-carbon bonds. 
But of course, it can't just be all so cut and dry as hard and soft nucleophiles. We do have some that are borderline. Let's look at some examples. The azide nucleophile is borderline. We already saw that the cyanide nucleophile is borderline, and we saw how we could control that reaction by either cooling it down to give the 1,2 product or warming it up to make the reaction reversible and get the 1,4 product. Other examples are primary and secondary amines and bromine. Bromine is more electronegative and smaller than iodine, but larger than fluorine and chlorine, so it's somewhere in the middle. So what do we do when we see examples of these nucleophiles? So when we have these borderline nucleophiles, we'll have to look at the reaction conditions and see if it's heated. Heating the reaction is going to promote 1,4 addition. Cooling the reaction will promote 1,2 addition. And the substrate structure is also going to become very important. With any of these nucleophiles, an acid chloride is going to add 1,2. So if you're setting up a synthesis problem, you can decide what temperature to show your reaction at. And you could also use, um, if you're promoting 1,4 addition, you could use an ester or an amide or something that's less reactive at the carbonyl. KP here. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up on the way out. And for more chemistry, subscribe to my channel.